Hey family, so here we are and we have the train tile from Zombicide Undead or Alive and what I'm going to be going through today is how to turn this into a 3D decoupage tile so what I've done is I've scanned that same tile in here printed it out onto a sticky back uh, label and what we're going to do is going to mount that onto some mount board uh, which you can get in most of your standard hobby craft stores so that is what we're going to be doing and what I'm showing on the screen here so we'll do a couple of basic cleanup cuts first of all just to cut this out just to give us that focus here so we don't need lots of surplus label on the mount board now in this instance I've got a piece that is cut pretty much the right shape so where I'm doing some other pieces for Zombies Island and Dead or Alive so I've put that on there just smooth it out make sure there's no air bubbles or anything like that trapped in there and this just enables us to really embellish those original graphics that come with the game and help it to give a an additional dimension to the the table presence when playing it. I really enjoy playing it so far. Played uh, the starter mission just to get my head around the new rules, the new classes. Really enjoying those differentials. And then we played uh, mission two, uh, two players controlling three characters each, rescuing the brawlers, and uh, yeah, we, we managed to successfully complete that uh, there was one particular point that seemed very tight like we weren't going to get out of it um, ended up with my sister stuck in a room with um, four brutes without any close combat weapons but she was fortunately aided from another survivor, Trixie I believe it was, who had acquired a sabre and was able to take the sabre and cause enough casualties to survive another day. And so they all got out. And yeah, just great fun, just really needing to focus on balancing each character's progression, searching and locating better weaponry to, to tackle the continual onslaught of zombies. And I think there's as many have testified thus far, certainly considering more zombies in the, even at the lower ends, in the blue zone, just really keeping you on your toes, a lot more abomination cards in the deck as well so you'll see those come up and uh, activate more often so one of the other changes in the rules is the, uh, if, you, if you get to a point where you can't place miniatures then you add an additional activation to the abomination which I understand is a change to other zombie side instances so as you can see what I'm doing here is I'm just focusing on cutting out and around these um, the uh, the beams of the train line so this first layer of decoupage is going to add that 3d effect to the sleepers
and you'll see me measuring up here to get to the end of those sleepers it does take a little bit of time to do it, it can be a little bit finicky there's a lot of detail in there as you can see that just measuring up to that end of those sleepers on that middle block you can see there to the end of the sleepers and then as I take out those mid sections can then start going in and, and tidying up and really trimming that down one of the things that I haven't done on here but I will be doing is adding a layer of my mind's gone blank trying to think what it's called <laughs> and then a layer of like gloss and matte um, varnish that's the word varnish um, for some reason I had the uh, games workshop odd coat stuck in my head but uh, yeah adding like, a layer of varnish just giving that extra layer of protection just making sure this stuff lasts longer obviously at the end of the day it's all just paper and card um, but uh, yeah I mean any game you want to be maximizing playtime getting to the table often in and out the box lots of minis trooping around over the scenery you want to make sure you've got it well protected and you're going to get your your value and your your lasting tenure out of what you're producing particularly obviously you're putting a bit more time into making this stuff happen and you can see they're just trimming up those edges but I really like the uh, the graphics of all the tiles in the uh, zombie side under or alive I've heard many people say they are considerably more gruesome than the uh, other zombie sides in terms of the amount of blood content but they certainly haven't impacted the uh, streamline gameplay through the new rules it's very very good but I think it's it's very good tactical game you've you know, particularly for co-op you've got to work together you've got to plan out how to control the zombies how to achieve the objectives how to get to your end goal as with many co-ops it can be prone to the alpha player But do you know what? I just enjoy playing these games. Winning to me is a is a bonus. You know, it's it's a great sensation to get to the end of a game and have that kind of high fives all around the table, and that sense of success. Um, but actually, it's it's more about the playing, the experience, the reflecting afterwards oh I could have done this could have done that that was that was the point where we messed up that was let's make sure we do this bit again better next time etc etc um, and then going back and doing it again and trying to get it better so there you go so just on the uh, out the outer pieces there you get a sense of what that decoupage is going to look like now she's already starting to get that raised effect coming into place now of course you want to really enhance that through the beveling out in between the sleepers really make sure we're optimizing that 3d effect and of course once, once all this is assembled and put together you could absolutely go that extra mile and add um, sort of sad effect um, sort of terrain paint and, and what have you I 
on my, my very first mock-up of this I did that in, in fact my very first mock-up I didn't leave in so what you can see me doing here is is cutting out all the way around both the the sleepers and the uh, the steel girder so when I did my very first decoupage iteration of the train lines I just cut out the sleepers stuck all the sleepers down and then mounted it over the sleepers yeah the, uh, the steel that's so what I'm doing here is is leaving the steel beam in place and then I'll be mounting over the top of that to give that additional 3d effect and it really is just just looking out for the detail in the in the uh, artwork again it, it really is tremendous artworks fantastic level of detail there um, sometimes the the trick is is just just paying attention to it just trying to find the finer elements so what we see so what I'm doing here is is they're, they're fairly well defined in terms of where that steel shadowing is and and where the edges of the sleepers are that they've they've all been done very well so they're very good and easy to see and with the next section after this you'll see a bit more finesse So this is where I'm looking to just embellish the uh, the steel girders. So again, I'm going to mount this back on the same mount board. Again, you can pick this up fairly readily at any hobby store. This is great stuff, very robust, and it gives that consistency in terms of the thickness as well. So when you are building up multiple layers, you get that consistency of the end result as opposed to using things like sort of boxes and packaging um, which absolutely can be effective but can be a bit hit and miss in terms of like I say the differences in thickness and layer and but also the the differences in the solidity you know and that's absolutely something you want you want that confidence and consistency in the end product and all the elements of it and that's why I'd, I'd rather buy the mount board than use um, packaging personally so again just very very rough cutting out at this stage the high level cutting out trimming and in fact these two here we will notice I've, I won't actually use these the, the thinner of um, the pieces that I'm cutting out they won't actually get used in the end Which is one of those things I wasn't too sure of at the time, so I thought, well, do you know what? I'll I'll print them out, and I've got them, and if I don't use them, it's it's no loss. And I've I've sped these videos up slightly just to, you know, the you want to see the detail of the stuff, but. I don't want to take ages over it. So this is where I was saying about that finesse. You can see then on either side of the, the steel rails, you get these rivets and these kind of a uh, 90 degree angle rivets that are holding that, that steel girder in place um, and fixing it 
to the uh, sleepers. So that's the, the bits that I'm focusing on, trying to make sure we capture in that 3D rendition. And what I didn't do on this video, but I may well do go back and do is is also do a, a similar level of replication. So if this is applied on the ground on those sleepers, um, having that similar or repeat motif and effect going up onto the girders as well, just to finish off that look. But it's always good just to use the original graphics of the game. Um, you'll note with the with the painting jobs that I apply to many of my games, I'll stick to the original colouring uh, established during the Kickstarter campaign or what have you. If I can get original images, um, either artwork or often, certainly with Simon, um, painted um, not renders um, the original sort of painted miniatures again, the word escapes me won't, apologies um, then yeah, that's that's my hope I think they're kind of resin moulds, I think the original batch that get uh, distributed out to the painters. And then yeah, I'll often use their um, painting as a guide for myself. Just trimming off those edges. There we go, and then a brief idea how this will look when it's stacked up. Let's take a couple of rotations just to work out which way round it goes. Make sure we get that down to pat. And obviously these will then be all glued together. And then we move on to the next piece of steel rounding. Uh, apologies, I seem to have misaligned the camera here, so I'm going to go back in. Okay, hopefully you should see a bit more what I'm doing now. Come back into shot a bit. There we go. So again, doing exactly the same as you. So I'll previously just trimming this down. This is a much darker side of the uh, the rails. side done like I say I have split this up slightly so yeah the, the process does take a bit of time I'd say it's probably 45 minutes maybe an hour to do the full end to end process just put it together to, to the degree you'll, you'll see it at the end of this video um, there's little more needs doing like I say I'd add a layer of varnish just to give it that extra bit of robustness in terms of genuine gameplay 
Um, or something like this, you, you're moving miniatures over it. So it can take a bit of a, a, a battering, particularly when you've got those edges. You want to make sure they're going to be protected. There we go. And then you can see that uh, the cabbage effect. So we're then going to get on to the gluing. And I'll just use standard UPVC glue for this. It doesn't take long to dry. It's just small amounts. It's enough to give it a good level of adhesion. Hold it in place. Just make sure those graphics line up. Make sure that's all nice and firmly positioned where we want it. And we're going to get a, a heavyweight, a couple of decent sized books. This is set on there. Now for me, I let these sit for a good sort of 15, 20 minutes. So when you come back, it's nice and firm. And then we're going to add the additional layer of decoupage and those steel girders and the uh, the wrought iron clasps holding those in place so again really simple small layer of that uh, UBV a glue stick both of those down and again set those with a heavy weight so once that comes off get that uh, decoupage effect there we go so you see we've got some layers going on there Obviously, you could just leave it at that point. You know, that's perfectly good as it is. Um, for me, I wanted to up the ante that a little bit further and just really make it pop. Um, and apologies, I run out of memory on my uh, phone at this point, which is why I've suddenly jumped a section. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we need sure I've just cut down those buttons and again just applied some glue, glued them on, fixed them in place. And it just gives you that sense of that steel girder. But I hope you've enjoyed watching. And uh, yeah, hopefully speak to you all again soon. If you've watched this far, thanks for watching. And I'll see you soon. Thanks, family. Bye.